Birdie, great to see you again. Animals Up Close is coming out on Disney Plus September 13th. We talked last year about your last show, and it was so such amazing, such amazing cinematography, and the work you do is amazing. And this lifts it up another level. What was it about this show that was uh, challenging for you, and what was the difference in uh, filming? Well, I think one of the key things that we did is that yeah, it's it's an evolution from Epic Adventures, mm-hmm. and we found one of the one of the key ways that we the stories became sort of extra engaging and intimate with these animals were when we focused on individual animals and individual animal families so that's really what we leaned into on on uh on animals up close and and sort of telling the stories of those amazing wildlife gatherings and spectacles through the eyes of of individuals um and that is challenging because it means you know when you go to patagonia to film pumas like we did we weren't going to film pumas we were going to film one individual Mm -hmm. Uh, she was called pataka and you know this happened with every episode it it does make it extra challenging but extra rewarding Mm -hmm. because we know that the animal doesn't care about us and doesn't think we're friends but Mm -hmm. i i kind of think we're friends you know you build up a rapport over over time and pataka i first met when she was a little cub four years ago um, and you know, back then she was a little fluffy ball of loveliness that was totally reliant on her mother. And so we wanted to check out how she was doing four years on for, for animals up close. And not only had she survived, which is a you know a big deal for a, a puma cub, not all of them do survive. Not only had she survived, she had transformed from this lovely, cute ball of fluff into this powerful super mum who now has two cubs of her own. Um, and she took us on a physical and emotional roller coaster. Physical in that, you know, we had to often walk 15 plus miles per day with her to keep up over the mountains with all our stuff. Um, and emotional because you gain an attachment to, you know, this animal when you see it every day. And she would, you know, she had to fight off a male who was twice as heavy as her that was trying to kill her cubs. Mm-hmm. Um, she was taking on guanaco uh, when she was trying to feed feed her cubs. It's like a big wild llama, really dangerous animal for her to be hunting. And so, yeah, anytime she got into trouble, our hearts were totally in our mouths. Um, and of course, the golden rule of filming wildlife is we are there to document. We can't get involved. So, yeah, you just have to kind of sit there and go. Cheer, cheer on Pataka. <laughs> exactly. And the patience that is needed to film this, because I can only imagine you're not going to get everything right then and there. It isn't like a, having a human actor. You're pretty much sitting around waiting for this to happen. The patience that is needed to be able to make sure you get these great shots. Can you please tell us a little bit about that? Well, I'm going to be controversial here and say that that you're incorrect. You don't oh, need no. patience. No, you wow. need two, you need two other P's. I'm not a patient person. You need uh-huh. two other P's. You need passion and you need persistence. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't say I necessarily enjoy being frustrated and mm-hmm. waiting for the animals uh, to do something. That said, you've just got to kind of zen out and 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 get in tune with the environment and as you say like pataka doesn't read the script she yeah. makes her own script and that script is far better than anything we could ever write and i mean staying on that episode a great example in that we thought our story was ended and i don't want to give away what happens because you know you have to watch the episode but we thought the story was over and then the pumas of Torres del Paine said, no, 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 we've got a little surprise for you. So there's a little twist at the end. Awesome. Um, and it's a perfect example of how, yeah, nature doesn't read the script. It writes a, a much better one for you. Yeah, because that's the one thing I always thought right off the top of my head is the patience to be up there and just to roll and shoot and not like miss anything. Just don't give I thought that the patience was more involved than everything else. But um, the one thing I do want to ask you about this time with your camera equipment, what type of camera equipment did you use this time uh, to be able to document it? Because I know with technology as it advances and and camera technology has advanced, what did you use this time in your camera bags? Yeah, so we used a lot of the the same pieces of technology, a couple developments that we did that we did have. I mean, on on Epic Adventures, we used rebreathers a lot. So that's the bubbleless diving technology allows you to be silent and stay underwater for hours at a time. We use them to an even greater extent on some of our marine episodes for animals up close. So on the Devil Ray Islands episode, 
We traveled to Raja Ampat, which is this magical archipelago of more than 1500 islands covered in jungle, surrounded by coral reefs in Indonesia. And there we were trying to film the Devil Ray, which is a, a relation of the Manta Ray, but they're smaller, shy um, and very speedy. Um, so spending the time underwater was critical and using the rebreathers. Uh, yeah, we, we were able to do dives that lasted often more than three hours at a time. And so you can really become part of the, the landscape underwater. In terms of new camera technology, um, in our Puma episode, uh, you know, a big thing that, that was the same on Epic, but we've really gone to a whole other level on animals up close, was making sure that all of these animal stories are set within a bigger environmental context, right? You know, it's, it's 2023. It's no secret that the natural world is in trouble because of us. But we also wanted to celebrate the conservation success stories, you know, the, the new strategies being put in place so that humans and wildlife can live alongside each other. Mm -hmm. So in the Puma episode, um, one of the biggest threats to, to Pumas is when they venture outside of protected areas, um, particularly young Pumas that are still not very good at hunting. They're still learning the ways of being a, a Puma. They bump into livestock, into sheep uh, that are really easy things to kill. Uh, and so they take that opportunity. And the farmer who sees those sheep as their, you know, they're their livelihood, they retaliate and they kill the puma. Mm -hmm. Well, we met who a guy who's who's in the film. He's called he's a farmer called Jose um, Antonio Kasanovich, mm -hmm. and he is breeding dogs that protect the sheep from the pumas. And this is not a new strategy. It's been used with leopards in Africa and a bunch of other places around the world. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't find a single video of what actually the dogs do when it comes to deterring the pumas. You know, what does that interaction actually look like? So I thought, well, let's not just talk about it being a solution. Let's film it. So it happens under the cover of darkness when normal cameras don't work. Uh, so we were filming in the pitch black, but we were using a thermal imaging camera. So it was originally developed for the military um, and it sees heat. So you can use it to see into the darkness. It's especially good with filming mammals because we're, we're warm blooded. So we had one camera on a on a tripod, kind of the traditional way. And then uh, that my colleague Sam was was operating. And then I was uh, flying a, a thermal imaging drone over the top. So flying in the dark, which was interesting experience. Haven't done that before. Um, and yeah, we filmed the interaction for the very first time between a puma and these these shepherd dogs. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's doing things like that to me, you know, making these conservation stories just as, you know, we're, we're investing just as much time and resources in telling those stories as we are the kind of wilder stories. And I think that's the key to making them interesting for so long. We filmed the wildlife bit and then went, and here's the conservation bit. And we didn't spend nearly as much time doing it. And it's just a bit, you know, mm -hmm. if you're interested in it, it's cool, but if you're not, it's like, uh, yeah. Whereas now, we, yeah, we're trying to make it as exciting and entertaining as the as the animal behavior. Yeah, and it opens up the people's eyes when they're watching it and really see that things are getting done. It's not just, hey, we're trying to conserve our planet and the animals to live in it. Yeah, it's proactive. It's, it's yes. exactly, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because like when I was going down on the train in San, to San Diego, when we're talking about the, the beaches washing away here in California, from last year to this year, I saw a big change and a big difference in that. So I can only imagine what is going on in the ocean. And I think that's where you come in and we get to see that. We get to see that what's going on. And it's great to see the positive changes and putting that up front. Uh, one thing I do want to ask you, it's six episodes this season for Animals Up Close. Do you ever wish that this could be on the big screen? Because the way you shoot, I can only imagine what this was supposed to be leave be like on a big screen or IMAX. That sounds great. Well, if you know anyone that wants to do that, <laughs> yeah, hook me up. Um, yeah, I've, I mean, we we shoot for the biggest screen possible. Uh, yeah, we try and shoot in in the most cinematic way possible within the 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 challenges of filming in the natural world. Um, in in you know in the rawness of nature. Uh, but yeah, that would be great. I mean, uh, anytime you see these animals as close to life size as possible um, is always a, is always a special thing to see. 
Yeah, because this could translate very easily onto the big screen. And I can only, I watch it and I'm just like, I can only imagine what it would be like. And the experience <laughs> towards kids watching it in such a big screen and such a, in, in such clarity that they'll just blow their minds and want to be a part of this. Sounds good. Sorry. Birdie, thank you so much for stopping with us as always. I always love talking with you and talking about camera technology because being a photographer myself, I seeing how you shoot, I'm just like, okay, how can we do the same thing? <laughs> so, but thank you so much for stopping with us. I really appreciate it. Sounds good. Thanks, Michael. Good to chat. No thank you.